Welcome to the JetBrains YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you how RubyMine helps you run and debug tests, get coverage information, create new tests, and do other useful things. You can use any of the most popular testing frameworks from the Ruby world, including RSpec, Minitest, and Cucumber. RubyMine also supports Shuda, helps you work with FactoryBot, and integrates with the SimpleCov library for collecting coverage data. In this tutorial, we'll use a microblogging Rails application that allows users to create accounts and post messages. You can clone this application using the link in the description. Before running tests, make sure you've specified the Ruby interpreter and installed the gems. In our application, we're using a separate gem set. Our application has two test folders, spec with our spec and test with mini test tests. RubyMine automatically marks such folders as test folders. If necessary, you can always do that manually from the context menu by marking a directory as a test sources root. To work with different testing frameworks, you need to install the corresponding gems to your project SDK. Let's take a look at the testing gems used in our project. For our spec tests in our Rails application, we are using the R spec Rails and Factory Bot Rails gems. The simple cov gem is used to measure code coverage. For mini test, we need the mini test and mini test reporters gems. Note that starting with version 2020.2 of RubyMine, you don't need mini test reporters anymore since it's now included in the IDE. One of the useful features is navigation between classes and corresponding tests. Open the user model class and select navigate related symbol. Here, you can select the desired target. For example, the user test or factory providing the test data. Let's choose the test for now. To go back to a class, choose Navigate, Test Subject, or use the corresponding shortcut. Within the Before hook, we use the Build Factory Bot strategy to create test users. You can jump right to the corresponding factory by clicking the left mouse button on the user symbol with the command or control key pressed. Now let's see how to run tests. Click the gutter icon next to the desired test. Here, you can choose to run the test, debug it, or run it with coverage. Choose Run. RubyMine will show that the test is passed successfully in the Run Tool window. We'll take a closer look at this window a bit later. After you've run the test, RubyMine automatically creates a temporary RSpec run configuration with the corresponding settings, such as the path to the script and the example name. You can customize such configurations and save them so that you can quickly run tests in the future. Now let's break a test. For example, the name should be present test makes sure that a user without a name is not valid. This test will instead fail if we do enter a name. Let's try a slightly different approach to starting this test. Place the caret on the name of the test, press Alt Enter, and choose Run. You can run all the tests from this file in a similar way by using the gutter icon or by pressing Alt Enter. The Run Tool window displays progress and the results of your testing session. Here, you can examine the results in various ways. For example, show all tests or only fail tests. Sort tests alphabetically or by execution time. View the execution time for each test by using the Show Inline Statistics option. RubyMine also automatically saves the results of the last 10 tests. You can view them by clicking the Test History button and selecting them from the list. On the RSpec Log tab, you can see all the transactions performed during the execution of the tests. Let's see how RubyMine can help you fix tests that aren't performing properly. If you scroll down the test output on the right, you can go directly to the failed test by clicking on it. Let's set a breakpoint within this test to debug it. The Rerun Failed Tests button on the toolbar allows you to rerun and debug failed tests. To debug a failed test, keep Shift pressed and click this button. Then select Debug. You will be prompted to patch the Spring configuration file. This needs to be done to load the debugger into every process forked by Spring. If necessary, you can disable Spring for the current debugging session and re-enable it later. We'll choose to update the project configuration file. The test execution will be stopped on the Expect Matcher. On the Interactive Console tab, you can evaluate expressions and change variable values to check different conditions. Let's fix our broken test, remove the breakpoint, and rerun failed tests. 
RubyMine will rerun only the test that we just fixed. One more useful feature is auto testing. Enable toggle auto test to restart tests in the selected run configuration automatically when the related source code is changed. Now let's see how to run tests from a specific folder. You can right click the desired folder, for example, spec or test, and run tests from the context menu. The run configuration will automatically be created with the path to the folder and a file name mask. Let's switch to the Code Coverage tab for this configuration. This tab allows you to specify options for collecting coverage information. We'll exclude the test folder from coverage results. As you remember, our project has the simple cov gem installed in the project SDK, which is used by RubyMine to get coverage data. No additional adjustments are required to run tests with coverage. Just click the Run with Coverage button to do this. Coverage results will be displayed in several places. The Coverage tool window shows the percentage of covered files and lines. Here, you can navigate throughout the project to analyze results. In the editor, you can use the color indicators in the gutter to detect the uncovered lines of code. Finally, you can see the coverage results in the project view. As you can see, the test folder that we excluded in the coverage settings doesn't show any data. Let's hide coverage results by clicking on the color indicator in the editor. All the coverage information disappears from the IDE. When we do this, RubyMine doesn't remove the coverage data, but saves the results in a coverage suite. Coverage suites allow you to display or hide specific coverage results, merge multiple reports, and remove unnecessary results. Open the Find Action pop-up and find the Show Code Coverage Data command. In the dialog that appears, you can enable the checkbox to bring the coverage report back. You can also use Find Action to get the command to hide coverage data. Now let's consider how the IDE can help us create new tests. Open the MicroPost model. Then, press Shift-Command-T on Mac OS or Control-Shift-T on Windows or Linux to navigate to the related test. The IDE will offer you the choice to jump to a corresponding mini-test or to create a new test. Choose Create New Test. In the Invoked dialog, we need the spec Models folder. You'll notice that RubyMine suggests creating the test under the appropriate directory, replicating the directory structure based on the path to the model file. Finally, choose our spec and press Enter. RubyMine will create a test file with default initial content. We'll show you how to customize this content a bit later. Before writing a test, we need to load the Rails helper from the same directory where our tests are. Now we need to create test data. First off, let's create a test user instance from the user factory. Next, we need to create a sample MicroPost instance for the test user we created. You can see that the editor highlights the MicroPost factory since it hasn't been created yet. To remedy that, Let's jump to factories.rb and create the required factory. As you can see, RubyMine offers autocomplete suggestions for the factory attributes. If we open our test, we'll see there is no longer a warning for the MicroPost factory. Now let's write a test that checks the validity of the MicroPost we've created. The afterhook and context can be removed. Let's run our test to make sure everything works. The final thing we want to show you in this video is how to customize templates for creating tests. Open the Settings Preferences dialog and go to the File and Code Templates page under Editor. Here, you can find the default R spec template used to generate tests in RubyMine. You can customize it or create another template based on it. Click the Copy Template button to duplicate the template. We can specify a name for the new template and change its content however we please. To create a test from a newly created template, select the required folder in the Project view, press Command-N on Mac OS or Alt-Insert on Windows and Linux, and find the template by name. And that's it! Thanks for watching.